Okay, so for my senior project, I wanted to focus on percussion because that was the thing that was most dear to me over the four years at high school. I spent like so much time in extracurriculars and in bands doing music related things and in all of them I was in percussion related stuff. So what was the problem with my percussion? The problem was that all of our equipment at the school is just horrible. It was a wreck. <laughs> so um, I came here freshman year and we had like no equipment because it was all broken. People were just throwing it at the walls, dropping it off trap stands. And so over my four years I saw this problem evolve and constantly snowball until we eventually had like no equipment. And here's a list that I made of some of the things that are broken. Or at least they were broken. So we have the slapstick and a Fuji Hibasa, and that's kind of like a little ch -ch -ch thing that you have in your hands. It's a Latin instrument. Um, a suspended cymbal stand. A ratchet, which is like a noisemaker, and you crank it and it makes a loud sound. Castanets. We actually don't have a shaker. Uh, a kunga stand. Sand blocks. A mark tree, which is it's kind of like what wind chimes are, but it's like the fancy term. And then um, a drum set snare drum, that broke. Finger cymbals, we lost them. And bell tree, that's kind of like you scrape it against a bunch of little things and it makes an effect noise. And so, over the course of my senior project, I chose to work on these um, five. And this actually took a lot of time, even though it doesn't seem like it's that many instruments, but it was a lot of work and planning involved to do this. So, what could I do to save our equipment for the school? That was my biggest question. And so what I aimed to do was to fix and refurbish the broken percussion instruments. So I made that list of percussion instruments that was broken, and I tried to figure out what the best ways to fix them were. To create high quality percussion instruments that can be used seriously for pieces. This is the other part. I didn't want my instruments that I was making to look like they were like kindergarten things that you'd make. And so I had to make sure I used the right materials and researched the acoustics on how they make the best sounds. My third aim was to use as many recycled materials and as little money as possible. This was probably the hardest thing to accomplish just because it clashed so much with um, the top piece, which is to create high quality instruments. Because if you're trying to make high quality instruments, you want to use new materials that you get that are perfect. But trying to combine both of them at the same time is really hard to do. And that's one of the main reasons that this project was hard to do. And why would this help the community? Well, the community that I was targeting in this project was the percussion community and the band community in general. And so what this would do is I was thinking that if I was making these percussion instruments and there hasn't been anyone doing this over the four years I've been at high school, maybe it would start, I would, this initiative that I took would start the drive for percussionists to actually make their own instruments. Because as a percussionist, you need to have a DIY attitude because most of the stuff you play is just hitting things. So you can make your own instruments really easily, but, and a lot of times you have to make instruments. And I'm usually the person who ends up doing it. So for the four years I've been at high school, I've had to make instruments, I've had to make like a little whirly thing that you spin over your head for a song that we did in band, and then I've had to make um, these instruments, obviously. And it's just a lot of things that have been left up to me, and I'm hoping that with this project, other people will take that and try to make their own instruments for band also. So this is what the first thing, this is the main thing that got me thinking about this project was that our slapstick was broken. So this was the main thing that drove this project was this big slapstick. Now the one that we used to have was completely broken so I couldn't repair it. I had to start with a new piece of wood. And um, a lot of the stuff that I made with these instruments, I it was made out of wood, and I don't really have that much experience with a wood shop and cutting wood. So I went over to um, Maggie's grandparents' house with Tom, which is her grandpa, and Maggie, Tom, and I worked on a lot of these wooden instruments. And I must say,
say that they honestly did as much work as I did, and sometimes more work. So they deserve credit for these wooden instruments, including this one. This is me measuring out the wood for the slapstick in that place. And um, I was following a plan vaguely that I got off the internet, but I didn't want to follow it exactly just because I felt like it could have been improved by making it longer. And so I sent, we um, cut these holes in the slapstick right here. And these are for air resistance. So when you bring it together, it can come together as quickly as possible. And so they're intentionally offset to push out as much air as possible. So, this is what it sounded like at the end. It sounds pretty sweet. <laughs> and that's an effect sound that you use in a lot of pieces that imitate a whip, like in Sleigh Ride, you use that for the horse whip track. And originally we had like this little piece of wood this big doing it for the concert, it's like, <laughs> and it's like, that's not very effective, so that's a good thing to have in our personal. Now this was a mini slapstick, and we didn't actually need to make this, I wasn't originally going to, but it was I needed to because we were doing a song in band called Foundry, and that it has like a bunch of percussion in it, but um, this mini slapstick we had broke, and that's what it looked like, and so I needed to repair it for the concert. So I brought in this exact piece with all the broken parts into um, Maggie's grandparents' shop. And that's me vaguely cutting the wood for it. <laughs> and so we started making this slapstick. And it works really well, and it's cool. And it worked perfect for the concert. But the problem was that it broke a little bit in the performance. And so it served our purpose for the foundry performance, because it sounded really sweet. Because the person who was playing it was playing timpani and slapstick at the same time, so they were just like... <laughs> but, because that song was so vigorous, it actually made a little crack right here. And, I don't know how long it's going to last. I mean, it sounds fine right now, but it's gonna, it's no better condition than the other slapstick was right before it blew up. So, I'm probably going to have to remake this little wooden part. And that just goes to show that not everything went perfectly with this project. But it served its purposes for the one song that I made it for. This was the ratchet. This was one of the things I was thinking about in particular <coughs> that has been broken since freshman year. And it's actually been broken since my brother was a freshman, <coughs> which was a long time ago, because mm. he's like in college now. But this is basically just a noisemaker. And it's consisted of these little forky things that are made out of wood. And this is what they looked like before. They were completely broken. So when you turned it, it wasn't much of a noise. It was just a little sound. So we dismantled this whole thing in the shop. And we took out all the parts and we tried to recreate this little wooden section right there. And this actually took a while to get this aligned, and we actually, um, Maggie, Tom, and I had problems with getting the spokes to align with the gear for a while, and we almost had to put it off until later, because it was getting really late, I was there, I was at the shop for six hours or something, it was crazy, but we finally got it to work, and so, now it sounds really loud and cool, and this is also an effect instrument, so if there's just like a really loud passage of music and it's wants, you want it to sound as dissonant as possible, you can just spin this really quickly. And it makes a really obnoxious sound. Okay, this was the mark tree, otherwise known as wind chimes. And these instruments never shut up, and they're Mr. Tate's least favorite. <laughs>
and that's the mark tree on the sand, which is, looks like when you have it like this. And so I actually went um, to the shop, I forgot I did this, and I cut down some of these pipes because, um, as you can see, I'm mix, mix, mix and matching two different sets of wind chimes. I have these really small aluminum ones and I have these bigger copper ones from two sets of wind chimes that are completely broken. And I kind of put them together. And because of that, these bars were originally way longer at the end than these ones were, and it made a really ugly jump in the sound. So I had to um, cut these pipes down a little bit and sand them down very subtly just so that the sound was more equal to transition. And I did that with the help of Tom in the shop. So this is what it sounds like when it's all finished. Do you think the instruments breaking is from like normal wear and tear? Do you think people have been like misusing the uh, instruments, or even non-band kids coming in going, "Woo, this is cool"? Because I well, it's a combination of both. With this one, this is wear and tear because we've yeah. protected all these new ones from crazy people until now. Now we're gonna release all these into the wild, and they're probably gonna break. But, okay. <laughs> but yeah, most of these instruments that have broken are actually from random people, basically who don't know what they're doing, and they just come in and mess around with it, and they like go like this, and then they Because <laughs> I know especially the ratchet is especially like tempting, like, ooh, this makes a lot of noise, and yeah. play with it for a long time. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to say that I thought that was like so awesome, and I thought it was cool that you like salvaged the old instruments, like trying to make new ones. And I wonder what you use for like your presentation. Is that a Google presentation? Or oh, it's um, Microsoft. Oh, it was just PowerPoint. Yeah. I just yeah, used a lot of. That was really. I thought all your effects were really cool. Thank you. I, this is like all I did over the weekend, basically, other than like prom. So your your love for music, your love for percussion, and specifically, is evident in what you've done. I'm curious if you have a newfound appreciation or maybe it's a different appreciation now that you've actually taken some of the instruments quite physically in your hands and reconstructed them to create these different effects. Do you have a different appreciation for it or, or what? Well, a lot of these, I literally have like a different appreciation for a lot of these instruments. Like the ratchet, I've never heard what a ratchet sounds like with all these pegs in it before until I fix 
fixed it in the shop and I was like sitting there and it was kind of hard to turn and then Maggie and Tom weren't sure if it was fixed or not or if it was just broken and I was like, because I had a weird expression, I had never like heard the sound before mm -hmm. and it's because I never heard an actual branch before in my hands. I always had both. And the same thing with the wind chimes. I never had a complete set of wind chimes before. So I wasn't used to this down with all the overtones and everything. I was used to just like five isolated bars. So literally there are instruments that I had a new appreciation for because I didn't know that they sounded like what they did. <laughs> so I have a follow up for you too. Um, as, a, as a musician, is, is there something different that happens when you actually create and, and make the instruments yourself rather than just going out and buying the instruments and playing them that way? Yes. Can you tell a bit about that? that well, that was kind of like the whole essence of the project was to make these and not buy them. But like with this slapstick, um, it was designed to our specifications. If we bought a slapstick, it wouldn't be exactly like this. It would have been just like, you know, assembly line, a certain size, a certain way you slap it. But with this, it was designed specifically, like I, you know, measured out where to hit this and everything. And as a musician, I knew what I wanted mm -hmm. specifically in this. So I could design it to my specifications and to what I thought would be the best for the instrument. But I never actually showed these off. These are sand blocks. Okay. One last question. Oh. Other than uh, the simple stand, where did you have to sacrifice recycling materials for getting a quality instrument? Um, the simple stand was um, that was the biggest one, but I had to also um, I did buy these knobs and stuff and the screws I went in into. I didn't make them in the sweet. And I couldn't. I was trying actually. I was procrastinating on making this for a while because I wanted to find like an old cabinet to put the things on. But I couldn't find one that had handles that I wanted. So I just ended up buying those. Um, I think that was the main thing. I, think some, I think one of these pieces of wood I might have bought a long time ago. But it doesn't really count. But yeah, this is the main thing that I had to buy everything. And it didn't really cost much because PVC, because this is actually made out of PVC. Thank you.